Lumbini in Sanskrit means the beautiful one. Prince Siddhartha was born in the lush Lumbini garden in the Himalayas between the 6th and 7th century BC. Despite leading a life of luxury in the palace at Kapilavastu, Siddhartha soon became aware of old age, disease, death and serene renunciation. Deeply affected, he walked out of the palace one night, leaving behind his wife and son. He stayed with hermits, joined wandering monks and endured severe austerities. Finally, he sat under a Bodhi tree on the banks of the Nairanjana river and went into deep meditation. After several days, he passed through the threshold and reached the place he was seeking. Siddhartha became the enlightened one, the Buddha. In Sarnath, earlier known as Jetvan near Varanasi, the Buddha gave his first sermon about the middle path and the four noble truths. These concern Dukkha, which is the knowledge of the suffering undergone by everything that is born. Samudaya, or the knowledge of the origin of suffering. Nirodha, which is the conquest of suffering. And Magga, the middle way that leads to the conquest of suffering. The middle way incorporates the eightfold path, which consists of right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration. The Buddha demanded that we strike at the root of suffering and then work towards ultimate, absolute happiness. Suffering is an inherent part of human existence. The origin of suffering is ignorance. The main symptoms of that ignorance are attachment and craving. They can be terminated by following the Noble Eightfold Path. The Buddha travelled with his monks seeking alms and preaching Dhamma. His teachings touched and transformed the lives of innumerable people. At the age of 80, the Buddha left his earthly body in Kushinagara with his final words, All composite things must pass away. Strive for your own salvation with diligence. The Buddha's body was cremated. His ashes and relics were placed on monuments or stupas, some of which are believed to still survive. There are three types of worship according to Buddhism. Sharirika, Paribhogika and Uddeshika. Sharirika is considered the superior method, especially in Buddhist countries, because it involves parts of the Buddha's body. This form of worship is categorized as Rupakaya and Dhammakaya. The mortal remains of the Buddha are known as Rupakaya and his teachings form the Dhammakaya. After the Third Buddhist Council meeting in the 3rd century BC, Emperor Ashoka sent missions to various parts of South Asia. Besides building monuments to the faith, he also inscribed pillars at each of the blessed Buddhist sites, signifying its value. Vestiges of many of these ancient structures still survive. The message of Buddhism was taken to Sri Lanka by his children Mahinda and Sanghamitta and became known as the Pali Canon. In South Asian countries like Burma, Cambodia, Sri Lanka and Thailand, the teachings based on the Pali Canon came to be known as the Theravada school. In Sri Lanka, Buddhism soon became the national religion. In India, there were new interpretations of Buddhism that focused on the concept of the Bodhisattva, which is the goal of every individual to attain the status of a Buddha and to work for the good of their fellow beings. These interpretations culminated in the Mahayana tradition of Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism took root in China, reaching there through the trade route and was assimilated in the course of four centuries. It branched off into different schools using local beliefs like Taoism, for instance, to augment its growth. Mahayana was picked up and embraced in Korea and Japan as well. And then came Vajrayana. New developments within the Mahayana fold around the 7th century included the evolution of Buddhist Tantra. 
This tradition was born of the interaction between Mahayana Buddhism and Hinduism and took shape mainly in Tibet. The Tantric influence in Vajrayana helped the seeker in finding a quicker path to his goal. Kadam, Kagyu, Nyingma and Gelug were the Buddhist traditions that came up in Tibet. In Japan, schools of philosophy and monastic discipline were established at first. But during the Heian period between 794 and 1185 AD, a conservative form of Tantric Buddhism became popular among the elite. After the 13th century, Zen and Pure Land Buddhism became popular. Meanwhile, the re-establishment of Brahmanism and the rise of the Bhakti cult among the Hindus of India added to the plight of an already beleaguered Buddhism. Soon in India, there was no room for Buddhism outside the Hindu fold. Today, two and a half thousand years after the Buddha's lifetime, a strong, resurgent Buddhism has surfaced all over the world. There is a renewed interest in the pristine quality and practical applicability of the Buddha's teachings. In India, the home of its birth, Buddhism has returned with a strong presence. Ancient monuments of art and architecture dedicated to the glory of the faith are now being restored and revisited. People gather at the sites from all over the world to see the expressions in stone, learn from the artistic creativity and deep faith that had driven the early monks of the Buddhist faith. The holy sites that represented major events in the life of the Buddha attract thousands of pilgrims and constantly reaffirm the relevance of a faith that was born in India and has now achieved a renaissance.